everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem. Today we're going to have a sort of hybrid video. A long, long time ago, way back at the beginning of the year, I did promise that we would take a look at the latest set of Black Widow pencils, which is the Monarch set. When I received these, there were some really strange duplicates in the set. I ended up with two uh, like duplicate colours of like six different colours. So I had to get in touch with Albert at Black Widow and uh, he sent me out replacements. Now, unfortunately, the replacements come from Australia. So that's a, a pretty good distance away from Scotland, obviously. And I had to wait for them. Now, these haven't just arrived. I have had them for a wee while, but it's one of those videos we just never quite got round to. So today we're going to have a look at the colour selection in here, do a bit of swatching out. And then we're going to do something in this book here. And this is Beautiful Letters to Colour and Share. And this was sent to me by the lovely Linda. So thank you very much, Linda. And this is a gorgeous wee book. And as the name suggests, these are illuminated or sort of fancy letters. They are perforated down the side of the page. So you can colour them in and frame them and give them to people as gifts. There's a couple of each letter as well, which is really nice. But they're different designs. They're not the same designs all the way through. So if you like one C, you might not like the other C or vice versa. So there you go. There's two Ds there that are very different. So I thought that would be a nice way to test these pencils out. So this is going to be done over two videos. The bulk of the video today will be talking about the pencils and then the second part will be mostly the colouring of a letter of our choosing. So to put you in the picture, if you're not familiar with Black Widow pencils, they're quite unique in the sense of the way that they've been brought out. Originally, there was just one set and that was the original Spider set. And they've added subsequent sets to, to this pencil selection. And they're actually quite a broad ranging set of pencils now, but you buy them in individual sets. For example, there is the Spider set, there's the Cobra set, um, there's the Scorpion set, there's a couple of tins of skin tones and the Monarch pencils as well. So the entire range of Black Widow pencils now, there's 144 pencils altogether, which is inclusive of this set of 48, which as I said is the most recent set. So this was never really designed to be a standalone product. It's more of an add-on for what's already available in the, the other Black Widow sets. The thing that set, kind of sets this apart from the other ones, number one, it hasn't been named after a creepy crawly, it's been named after a deer, which is absolutely fine but also this is the only set of 48 available the other sets come in 24 and 12s and it's the skin tones that come in 12s so this is really not designed to be an entire and um you know complete palette in itself and that's one of the things that makes these really really interesting if i just lay these out you can see very quickly why i say that there are an excellent selection of like nice pastel shades. There's more pinks than you can shake a stick at. And the same with greens as well. The range of greens is absolutely spectacular. And they've also increased the grey selection as well. So it's quite an interesting set of pencils to buy. Now, one of the things that I like about this is there's some quite unusual colours in here. So even if you don't own the other Black Widow sets, these pencils will play quite nicely with your other brands of pencils. And things like pastel colours seem to be something that a lot of other pencil brands are lacking in. So this would be an ideal bolt-on even for some of your other coloured pencils. The difference between these and the previous Black Widow sets is that well the similarities are there but there's also some differences as well I've got the rest of them in this whopping great big case uh, you know 144 pencils take up quite a lot of space but the original sets of pencils so like the scorpion pencils the cobra pencils they looked a little bit like this the barrel and the wood was black and you had no dipped ends to indicate what color was the pencil actually was and then you had the writing down the sides so if I just show you one of these to compare it, they have the dipped ends and those started with the skin tone pencils. They were the first sets that came out that had this dipped end and that's pretty essential, especially if you're jumping between a lot of pencils because you don't want to be squinting at the barrel every time you want to pick up a new pencil. And it's not always obvious because the only place you can see the core is at the tip. You can't really see them at the ends because they're, they're covered over. So that was an excellent introduction. 
and obviously at a glance you know you can you can see what's what so that was a, a vast improvement and I'm glad that they've carried this on with the Monarch pencils other than that they're pretty similar they have the the name and some of the names of these pencils are really fun I love them one of the pencils that's my favourite and one of the other sets is called Stinkbug and it's an excellent colour <laughs> and they've also got a colour code as well so if you're a person that uses numbers rather than pencil names it's all there for you in terms of where these pencils sit on the market these are definitely a, a mid-range brand of pencils they are they're not touted as you know professional artists pencils uh they've got no light fast ratings i do believe they've got some light fast properties but they have these have not been light fast tested and they're definitely definitely aimed at the the colorist rather than the artist they've got that really nice balance and i have noticed just because i do both obviously i, I paint i draw but i like to color as well and i do tend to find that the sets that are aimed towards colorists have a much larger range of colours. The likes of your Prismacolor pencils, um, they are really popular for both artists and colourists, but there's 150 of those. These Black Widow pencils, you've got 144 of those, and I, I could go on, I could name, you know, screeds and screeds of them. And really what that lets you do is you don't have to do a lot of blending or layering to make a colour that you want. Most of them are there and readily available for you. The whole point is that you don't have to put any stress on yourself or think about mixing colours because you just pick up the pencil and it's there and I think that's why the big sets do so well and it's certainly something that I enjoy I enjoy colouring as a form of relaxation and making something look pretty and it's really nice just to be able to put your hand on a pencil pick it up, that's the colour it's going to be that's the colour that you want, job done off you go, scribble, scribble, scribble my issues with the Black Widow pencils in general, I have found that through the varying sets, not just one set, the lay down can be quite inconsistent. Some of the pencils are really, really soft and, you know, feel very sort of velvety going down on the page and others are feel really dry and scratchy. Now, there's going to be a degree of that because it's different recipes for different coloured pencils. It's different types of pigments. You're never going to get that absolutely uniform and that's true of any set of pencils. But I found it to be quite frustrating. But also as well, you've got to remember you get what you pay for. And these are a mid-price pencil. These are not a premium artist grade pencil. So in terms of what you're actually paying for them, I think they're very, very good value. And the fact now as well is you can get them open stock. All you have to do is contact Black Widow and someone will send you out any replacements that you desire. So particularly for colourists that are in Australia and possibly New Zealand as well. I don't know what your mailing's like between you guys and um, th this would be a great set of pencils for you to have if you don't have already because they would be readily available to you and also it would be easy and quick to get replacements so naturally what we want to do is swatch these colors out so i'll do what i normally do i will uh, speed this part of the video up so i don't torture you if i've got any specific comments or any surprises i will let you know but i'll talk a little bit more about the different colors once i finish swatching them out So here's our finished swatches, all done and labelled as well. And as you can see, there is a lovely range of colours here, but I have questions. Oh, goodness me, I have questions. There's a couple that I've starred here just because I wanted to talk about them a little bit. Opal was the first pencil that I used in the set that felt significantly different in the consistency of the core to the previous two. This was really creamy and the lay down was so, so easy. And the same thing happened a bit further along with the Blue Daisy as well. Compared to the rest of the, the pencils in that sort of blue into purple section, these two felt as if they came from a different set of pencils. The rest of them all felt quite similar. And if you are heavy handed, you'd have to be really, really careful with these colours. Uh, just basically because you're going to mash it down into the tooth of the paper. So that inconsistency, I mentioned that at the beginning. That's one of the things that kind of annoys me about these pencils. But it, is, it feels so obvious. Even to someone who isn't well practiced with pencils, you'll be able to feel the difference in those two compared to the others 
uh, you know, in the blink of an eye. So there's that. Um, I never take the colour names too seriously with the Black Widow pencils because they, they're always quite fun and you don't expect them to be accurate artist names. But there's a few that you kind of have to sort of put that to the side, like your expectation. One is lavender. This looks really like a fuchsia or a magenta colour to me. It's definitely not lavender, but you just got to kind of give that a pass with these pencils. So as long as you get that sort of preconceived notion out your head, you're not going to have any problems. But if you are looking for a lavender colour, it is not going to be the pencil that's called lavender. Moving on to these sort of pinky, peachy tones and into yellows here. There's some lovely colours here. Again, a bit unsure about some of the pencil names. Fudge. If I've never seen fudge that colour in my life, but still, we'll let it slide. One of my favourites here is Mushroom. This is such a versatile pencil and it's not a colour you see all that often. And it's somewhere between like um, a, a sort of mid flesh tone. It's got a little bit of brown in it, but it kind of leans towards pink as well. And that's a really helpful pencil to have for a variety of things. It works in landscapes, it works in portraits, it works in animal portraits as well and also if you're doing something a bit more colourful like um, you know if you're going to do some flowers or something like that it can be utilised for that too so I'm really really impressed that there's this sort of colour in this set of pencils. I feel as if these paler colours so for example ice cream and if we just sort of shift over a bit candy and peach they're lovely, delicate colours, but there's not much substance to them. And that's the top part of that's three layers of pencil. So if you're looking for something with any sort of impact, they're not really going to do it for you. And I appreciate that they were deliberately putting in some of these more delicate colours. But I just feel between candy, peach and mango, they're, they're, it's a bit of a much of a muchness. There's really not that great a difference between the peach and the mango. It is so, so, so slight. Um, unless you're really nitpicky, I would say that you could have easily taken out one of these pencils out of the set and you wouldn't feel hard done by. The Aztec Gold is fabulous as well. I'm really, really impressed with that. Again, bit of a smoother, richer lay down with that one. And just talking about being much of a muchness, these three very pale colours, which was the Oyster Milk and Cream, again, the same thing because they're really pale colours anyway. Unless you're really looking, especially if you were going to use these in a colouring page where you've got a lot of shadow and, you know, a lot of light and dark areas, you would hardly be able to tell the difference between these three. So again, not that bothered about them. Um, could easily have cut, cut a couple of them out the set and it wouldn't have made much of a difference. So if we move down into the greys now, now this is, this is where I get a little bit salty. <laughs> I'm actually going to test these out just in case I got the pencils mixed up, but I don't think I did. This is dark grey, this is light grey, and this is medium grey. Now, by anybody's reckoning, even if you don't pay attention to the pencil colour names, that's going to confuse the bejesus out of you. So that's completely the wrong way around. There is a chance that they've been labelled incorrectly, but that's, that's a major, major fail as far as I'm concerned. The light grey is lovely, it's a very delicate colour and that would be perfect for layering over other colours as well if you just wanted to make it a little bit more muted. So again, a very useful pencil to have in the set. And speaking of useful pencils, I'm going to skip the grey slate just for the moment. Shadow, this is an excellent sort of neutral colour and it, it, it definitely lives up to its name. That is a pencil that I would use a lot because it's dark enough to be able to use it for shadows as the name may suggest but it's just a very versatile colour to have because it's soft enough to use in with other things. So again, really, really impressed with that. Lovely pencil to have in the set. If we just jump back to Grey Slate, I am wondering whether this is one of those situations where this looks really purple because it's next to the greys, but if I put it next to purple, it's going to look really grey. So we're going to try that out as well. There is a name for that. I can't remember what it is. It'll come to me. So I'm going to test that out, but to me, that should have maybe been taken out of the grey section and put into the purple section but we'll see we shall see we've got some addition of the nice sort of earth tones as well now there's very few in here but there are lots and lots of earthy tones in the earlier sets i did do a video on the original i think it was the original three sets of black widow pencils i w i'm trying to think when i did i think it was one cave miss I will find the link to that video for you. I'll stick it down in the description and I'll pop it at the end card for you as well. So if you want to look and see some of the other colours in the Black Widow range, you can check that out too. 
So these are just a nice addition. There, there are quite a few sort of earthy red tones that are in a similar vein to this. And just off the top of my head, again, I think we could probably have done without this, and you know we wouldn't be uh, we wouldn't be worse off if we were all ready to be in possession of the the original sets. Then we get to the greens. My goodness me, these greens! Oh my, this light bronze color. This is a favorite with me. It reminds me of the green gold that comes in the Faber Castell Polychromos set. And again, this is a very very versatile color. It's good for using it in foliage. Also, you can use it for metal objects as well, or you can kind of push it into the yellows if you're doing something in, in those sort of colours. So really happy to see that as well. They have named one of them, confusingly, Sapphire. I don't know what that's all about. Just take from that what you will. But there's real variation in the different types of greens until we get to these sort of paler ones. And I would happily add a lot of these to my, my collection of green pencils. I use a lot of green pencil. My favourites here are Iceberg. And peppermint, they are excellent colours. You've got a nice sort of muted green almost into jade. And this peppermint colour is just really fun. I like it a lot. These three here, uh, wash green, antler and poison, they're so close together. You can see antler in the middle. It's got a bit more sort of yellow in it. But apart from that, again, same thing, particularly with the wash green and the poison, they are so close together. It would be very, very difficult to tell them apart if you saw them in a piece. So again, I just feel as if that's, you know, one of those could just go. They could just go. So overall, I am I'm impressed with these pencils and I would take these as an add-on set. I wouldn't purchase these to have as a main set of pencils because you're lacking things like a red and a, a true black and that kind of thing. But for anyone that maybe wants to expand their pencil collection and doesn't necessarily want to spend a lot of money, these are an, a really affordable way to give yourself some of the more unusual colours without breaking the bank. Obviously prices vary. I'll stick up on the screen what they're retailing at just now currently so that you can get an idea. And I will do that in several currencies to save you having to, to convert it. But I really like these and it's nice to see the more unusual colours because normally, let's face it, when we review pencils, we're like, oh, here's sap green, you know, here's Prussian blue. So this is actually really nice and really fun for a change. But what we have to do now, this is the difficult bit. We're going to have to decide what colours we're going to use in our colouring page. Just before we do that, I want to try this, this grey situation out just to make sure Gem Gem hasn't made a boo-boo. So I've got the light grey, the dark grey and the medium grey. So this is the light grey. So we were definitely right with that one. That matches up over here. That's fine and dandy. Now, this is the medium grey, as it says on the pencil. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the dark grey. So very confusing. And I think the best thing I can do with those is probably tape off the name on the label. Um, you know, and swap them over and just write them on and stick them around the pencil. I think that's probably the best thing to do. The other gripe that I have, and it's a gripe I have with most pencils with dip tens, and it's not specific to Black Widow pencils, I know it's very difficult for them to get the dipped ends to match the core colour exactly because this has to be painted on. It's not as if you can just colour it in with the core of the pencil. But some of these are so far away from the colour of the core it makes it very confusing and I'm sure it was the last set of these or it might have been the castle art pencils. I, there were several occasions where I got the pencils mixed up because I relied on the dipped ends and that's fine and for some people it's not really an issue but if you are in any sort of time constraint or you're in that sort of slightly meditative state when you're colouring that is not helpful and you are going to make mistakes. So I wish they wish companies in general, I say not just Black Widow, I wish they would pay more attention to these dip tens. And if it's not going to be right, then you have to do something to fix it because it gets really annoying. And I personally hate having to pick pencils up and squint at the barrel, especially when they've got this metallic writing to see, you know, to make sure I've picked up the right pencil. Some people really like the metallic printing on the pencils. It depends what kind of light you're working in. I would prefer it if it was just white, to be honest. White stands out great against black. That's time tried and tested. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And um, the the writing can, can wear off these quite quickly as well. 
I haven't had that experience with these pencils because obviously I've not used them. But with some of the earlier Black Widow sets, the, the, the writing has uh, started to kind of wear off. So those are li just little practicalities. They don't bear any sort of real problem in terms of the performance of the pencil. It's more just convenience. But I always think it's something that's worth mentioning because I'm a very, very practical person. So let's bump this out the way. Now the question is, which letter do we pick? <laughs> seem to have had this debate once before. I think we should just pick a pretty one. There's some really nice examples at the start as well of, of how people have used them. Very, very cute. There's a, there's a little bit at the start here that tells you uh, about the, you know, the different types of letters and what you can do with them to make them a little bit more funky and individual. So they're suggesting borders. Um, using them for greetings cards, that kind of thing, or using them as a, the starting illuminated letter for, you know, like quotes, phrases, poems, that kind of thing, which I think is really cool. I actually really like this A. Maybe we should pick B for Black Widow, or M for Monarch, or C for Colour Cave. Let's see what our M looks like. I'm trying to remember my alphabet, guys. Oh, I like this one. I think we should do this one, M for Monarch. I think I'll take this out of here because the, the binding in this book is quite stiff obviously because it's got the perforated part so I think we'd probably do well just to take this out. I'm always a little bit nervous about doing this in case I tear it. Oh it's coming away fairly easily, that's good. Jem breathes a secret sigh of relief. We wreck the video before, <laughs> before we've got into any colouring. Ta-da! It's been a while since I've done anything that's got really chunky line, line work as well. That's something really nice about that. So I'm just going to lean on this pad for this. I'll keep this beside me just as a reference because this is the best way for me to pick out the right pencils instead of looking at the dip tens. If anyone's interested as well, this paper that we're using, this is the Artful uh, Heavyweight Cartridge Paper. I've got this in one of the subscription boxes. You can buy it from the, uh, from the website. I love it for stuff like this. It's got just the right amount of tooth. So it's a little bit texture, but not too much. So if we take a look at the letter here, we've got uh, this bird here, which I feel could be quite colourful, but we have lots of room to use our bajillion green pencils that we've got. And we've got a little snake down here. I really like the idea of this emerald colour. It's kind of speaking to me, but the question is where to put it. I think we should maybe start with the actual letter itself. So if we're going to have a lot of greenery around here, we would maybe want something contrasting with that. So maybe we should use the um, the lavender pencil. That might be quite nice. And we could even blend it in with the, 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 the hot pink that's, that's, that's not very hot. And maybe try blending a little bit of those together, see how that works. The other issue I have had with the Black Widow pencils in the past I had quite a few problems with breakages at one point. It seemed to be a specific few pencils, though it wasn't with all of them. So I'm interested to see how these are going to perform in comparison to that. Right, let's just go for it. So the base of this letter is going to be like a pinky purple, and I'm going to start with the hot pink, which is quite a delicate colour. But that will give us a nice base, and we can see how we get on building up the lavender over the top of it. That's actually magenta. Now straight away, this this paper uh, is it feels maybe a hundred and I want to say a hundred and eighty gsm, and it has got a little bit of texture on it, and it doesn't seem to want to take this pencil, so we're off to a flying start. Again, this might just be the pink though. So let's just see what we can do. I don't feel like the lay down is generous here. I feel as if I'm using a really cheap pencil like a Crayola. Now I'm not knocking Crayolas, I actually quite like Crayola pencils, but these are significantly more expensive than Crayolas. So, you know, yeah, that's not, that doesn't feel good. I feel as if I would have to press really, really hard for anything spectacular to happen. I'm just trying to keep in my mind that it is quite a, quite a delicate colour and maybe this paper isn't just quite as toothy as the cartridge paper we were working on. And the colour is going down, but you can see how delicate that is. And if I just slide the swatch down, when you see it on the cartridge paper, even in its lighter forms, I'm thinking to myself, mm. see, I'm just resisting the urge here to press hard because that's the worst thing that you can do. Because what you do then is any tooth that is there on the paper, so any texture that's there, you're squashing it flat. And then that's like trying to write on a piece of glass with a a paintbrush, you know, it's just going to slide about. It's not actually going to grip any of the pigment. 
So I'm thinking to myself, where, where are little birds perched? In there, I just need to put a bit of a point on this. I would feel that it would be darker in there. Now, I'm getting on considerably better with this pencil. Now that could be the pencil itself, you know, I was talking about that sort of inconsistency within the within the, the different colours, or it could be because we've got a layer of pencil down already. It still feels pretty slippy though, if I'm honest. I kind of feel as if I'm trying to colour on marker paper. Let's try it. Let's try and uh, layer this pink over now and see what happens. Oh, these are blending together beautifully. That is just like smooshing all together. That was really, that felt really nice. I'm not able to layer much though and I'm, I'm still not pressing very hard. I don't know if you heard that thump there. That was Jock chucking himself about. <laughs> Big sigh. I keep forgetting that he's getting old now. He's not, not a young boy anymore. Okay. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I mean the pencil's not Jock. <laughs> See, my feeling is that a lot of the time I'll put, you know, start something off and then I go back to it and I'll maybe add more colour in. And I just feel like I don't, I'm not going to be able to do it here, which is, uh, which is a bit of a shame really. So let's try another layer of pink here. So I'm just trying to sort of build this up in this section here. I'm having a lot more success with this lavender pencil. Okay, I, I think we can work with this. I think we're going to be okay. It's just going to take a little bit of doing. Now, I would just like to point out about this. It's not necessarily the pencils. It's not necessarily the paper. It might just be the combination of the two that I've seen that happen quite often. And there's just some papers and pencils that, that just go, don't get on. It's a bit like humans and neighbours. <laughs> Sometimes they just don't go together. And that, that might just be the case here. But it's not as to say we can't do something with this. I'm, I'm, I'm not sitting here thinking to myself there's no way that this is going to turn out well. It's going to turn out absolutely fine. But we're just going to have to work a wee bit. Which, let's face it, Gem Gem is used to working, so not a problem. I'm not going for a specific light source here. I'm just sort of accenting areas because there's a lot of overlap. You know, there's quite a lot going on with this. And I just want to make it look aesthetically pleasing and interesting it doesn't have to be technically correct and again that's one of the lovely things about colouring there are no rules to this whatsoever and it's a really nice way as well I find as as a person that draws I hate calling myself an artist I, I don't I just don't think of myself as an artist but as someone who draws and paints I find it really helpful in discovering colours and trying out light and shade and just what goes together and it's a really nice risk-free way of doing it and I, I find it really enjoyable. But there's something very satisfying about colouring in someone else's line work. And I don't know what it is. I'm very much a completionist though. I like to finish things. I'm a, I'm a finisher. And I think th that colouring lends itself to that. Because it's almost like someone's done something really pretty. And then they can't be bothered finishing it off. And you're just like finishing the job for them. <laughs> That's a terrible analogy. But I don't know. I just get a real sense of accomplishment from it, especially if it's a colouring page you've been working on for months and months. And when you get to the end, you're like, yes, I did this. Yeah, so we're getting on a lot better. It seemed to be that first layer of pencil was just a little bit reluctant to go down. But in putting that down, we've given ourselves quite a nice basis here to work on. And these pencils are blending together beautifully. And that's one thing I will say that the, the Black Widows, most of them, across all of the ranges of pencils, they they are very good for smooshing, you know, smooshing together. Once again, technical description. So this, this is actually becoming quite enjoyable. I think sometimes as well, though, if you're working in a new book with a new set of pencils, now I know I've worked with the, the Black Widow pencils before, but it's been a while. Sometimes it just takes a, a little while for you to sort of get used to them and figure out how, how they work together. Uh, and I have found that in the past. I have got quite lazy over the years though, but my preferred set of pencils for colouring, I feel, and for drawing as well actually, are the Faber-Castell Polychromos. They're very predictable. They behave well with almost any paper and there's a good solid range of colours there. And if I'm, if I'm feeling particularly lazy, that's what I reach for. So this is probably good for me as well. Exercise my 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 colouring muscle again. But definitely press pressing hard is an, a no-go. That's no 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 no. Let's not do that. Let's run this lavender pencil all the way down here. I don't know what's gotten into chalk today. It's doing a lot of huffing and puffing. 
I'd love for this to be like a tutorial style. This is what I'm doing, but honestly, everyone, I am just making this up as I go along. As I said, I'm just, uh, I just want to make it look pretty. I'm not really bothered about rules and contrast and blah, 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 blah. I just want to have a little bit of fun, so especially when I'm trying out these pencils. I'm quite enjoying these two colours together though, I have to say. Okay, so I'm at the stage now where I need to sharpen uh, the, this uh, this hot pink. It's starting to wear down. Now, these pencils, I would say they're they're sort of mid to soft. I haven't really done much colour in there, like you know, I've got little dinky hands. So I've not really used this much and that's me having to sharpen that. I'll just hold it up against one that hasn't been sharpened. I sharpened it initially to get a point on it. That's as far as I've gotten with it and it's time to go again. So that's a slight downside to these pencils. Um, as I, I mention it all the time with softer core pencils. But again, as I said, if you were going to use these as a supplementary set of pencils, which is what I would suggest you use them for, rather than like your, your sort of main go-tos, um, I think you get a lot of colouring out of them before you have to replace them. Mama Gem's here. I can hear her battering about in the kitchen. I have no idea what she's doing. She's so funny. She she just wanders about in the kitchen and like tidies things up. <laughs> it's just what she does. Oh my goodness. She spends a lot of time in the kitchen. She likes to cook though, Mama Gem. She's recently taken up a new hobby though and alas, it's not colouring. Uh, she started doing cross stitch. Um, and I bought her, bought her one of these, uh, you know, proper kits that's all like colour coded and everything. And uh, I had no idea how big it was. Now bear in mind she's never done cross, well she probably did it at school. That was that was a considerable length of time ago. My mum's, uh, you know, she's she's not a young lady anymore. And she she opened up this, cro this cross stitch and it is absolutely massive. It's huge. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that maybe wasn't a good idea. You know, that's just talking about chucking someone in at the deep end. But I'll tell you what, giving her due, she's gone for it. She started it. And she's actually quite enjoying it. Because she had bought what she thought was cross-stitch patterns or kits. What do you call it? I don't even know what they're called. Somebody tell me in the comments. Uh, I'm pretty sure some of you do some, some stitching. Um, but she thought it was a cross-stitch and it was actually um, an embroidery picture and apparently that's lots of different stitches which she she wasn't too um wasn't too fussed about because she's not really you know done anything like that and she said it was quite complicated but she's determined she's finishing that one that she started the embroidery uh because she she's persevered with it but it's taken her an awfully long time and it's like this big <laughs> but she's she's more into the cross stitch so i've just made things horrendous for her by giving her like and it's like it's like 60 or 70 centimeters on the short side kind of thing and I was like oh I'm sorry mum's like this is massive so but she's she's quite stubborn as mama gem and I know she'll do it so she's she's been doing that but she'll be sitting and she's got it on her lap and she's sit stitching away and you know I'm usually through in the cave doing whatever it is I'm doing and every now and then you hear ow <laughs> she's poked herself in the finger oh it tickles me I should laugh should I it's quite funny though it's lovely to have her here, though. I'm really glad that we're able to be together, um, you know, in light of recent circumstances. I'm really, really glad because not that long ago we wouldn't have been able to do this. We weren't supposed to visit other households and that was just our, you know, our COVID restrictions. So I'm, I'm actually really glad that at least we're able to, you know, to be together just now because we kind of need each other just now. Maybe one of us needs the other more than the other way around, if you know what I mean. But it doesn't matter. It's not about that. Righty ho. Well, I have to say, that's not bad at all. That's not bad. I was a little bit concerned when we started, but I think we're going to be okay. So that was the hot pink and the lavender. And I think you'll agree that that is um, quite, a, quite an aesthetically pleasing start. And it's going to make a nice backdrop for all the greens that we're going to use in the foliage. And then after that, we can decide what we want to do with a rebird day and all the rest of it a bit further down the line. Uh, so yeah, for the next video, I'm going to finish off the bulk of the, the actual letter itself. And we'll carry this on next time. I would love to hear your thoughts on the pencils. Maybe you own them already or maybe it's something you're considering or maybe you've never heard of them. But I'm hoping this has been a little bit helpful today. I say we'll dig deeper into them a bit more in the next part of this video, which will be up uh, within a week. But I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments on these pencils or on this colouring book if you own this colouring book because it's absolutely lovely. So thanks again to Linda for the colouring book. And we shall see you guys in the next video back in the colour cave really soon. So have a good day, everyone. Stay safe. Bye-bye for now.